Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Politics Relaxed. Today, we're going to be talking about... Um, it's been an interesting week, hasn't it, in uh, politics? We started with a crime week and we ended with a uh, party gate. So it's been an interesting uh, journey, I, I, I'd maybe <laughs> describe that as. Um, it's not been a good week for Boris Johnson, that's for sure. Another bad week in a bad month, maybe even longer than that. And... I, I mean, it, we're gonna we're gonna get onto the overall bigger picture, but if if we do start with Partygate as it as it's been called, we're now up to eight parties, if I can count correctly, that have been uh, reported via different news news outlets over the last week. Eight parties, while well, five hundred on the day that there was the Christmas party, which was apparently organised with um, drinks, nibbles, and a secret Santa, according to reports. Um, 500 people died that day, and and we, we everybody was in lockdown. You, you, people couldn't like speak to their relatives on the day they died. And I mean, it, and what what made it all worse was the the like what I think is lying. What some might characterize as not not being informed of the truth is maybe the uh, the right the right way that Boris Johnson would want me to put it. Um, when the Allegra Stratton video came out after over a week of Downing Street, Boris Johnson denying that even a party had happened and that all rules were followed. It, it it seems to me that all rules were not followed, and Boris Johnson's lying, and that wouldn't be out of character. Um, it was a, a gross mistake for them to make uh, in holding Chris's parties during a time of of this pretty severe lockdown. I, I remember it being. Um, and basically for the PM's officials to think that they're above the rules is inexcusable. And I hope that um, those attending the party are rooted out by the, the inquiry and are, um, are dismissed from number 10. Um, but there has to be, of course, naturally a wider question about um, how the PM is claiming to have not known about this or wh whether he is or whether he isn't or what even is his position anymore because none of us know because sadly he's flip-flopped so much like Daniel Jones and and <laughs> to be honest the, the truth <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is that's because he's been trying to wriggle himself out of a situation of like a a, um, a wormhole where, where there's no escape you know um so I think that for him it's an incredibly difficult situation to be in to add on to weeks slash months of growing discontent among conservatives and 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 from from my point of view um that the pm should take responsibility if there was a party held and he should admit that uh, that he made a mistake and his advisors therefore um un under him made a mistake so he should take uh, accountability for that um because frankly the public require transparency and they require honesty from their politicians and if they're not getting that from the prime minister that is uh, totally unacceptable before we, before we move on to the conservative more generally how much is this going to cut through how much is this going to affect Boris Johnson because I, I mean I, I think it has cut through first of all because it I mean where like the whole country is talking about this people who don't particularly follow politics at least from my experience, are talking about this. And, and that's what's different to a lot of what's happened before, because a lot of it's been very Westminster bubble is probably the word to use. It's been very, I don't know, not using, like, for example, in the House of Commons, like, lying. It, people, people aren't as shocked by it. it. Inside politics, if you do that, you're, you're expected to lose your job. But outside of that, it doesn't have that big an effect, but I think, I think this one's different yeah. because because people have lost loved ones. People have yeah, people yeah. people during the height of the pandemic, people couldn't hold hands with their with their dying mother, father, grandparents when they were when they were on their deathbed, and then the prime minister's having drinks and nibbles at number ten, or, or his advisors are, and it, it's some people are talking about uh, whether it's um, whether he was involved, but. That, that's that's what's different for me. Yeah, exactly. When you talk about second jobs, talk about tax evasion and Tory donors, that's not something that really resonates with the average voter. But this, <laughs> um, this you, 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 in PMQs, you, you had a few MPs 
uh, give personal stories. Keir Starmer as well, personal stories when um, someone's lost a loved one and they've, they've told the entire story from beginning to end and then mentioned on the exact same day uh, that a party uh, was taking place. They've lost their mother, they've lost a father, a sibling. And that's really, really hit, hit voters. Uh, no, that's hit, that's hit the entire country um, so hard that we can have our government while people are dying, uh, while they're losing their loved ones. Uh, they, have, they have the nerve to break COVID restrictions that are meant to be for everyone. And that are meant to, we've, as a government, if, we, if the government puts rules, put laws and gui guidance amongst people, they're meant to lead by example and uh, show themselves as, as um, the, the people who are going to take us out of the pandemic. And when everyone else is following the rules and the government aren't, and you're following the rules, you're ta it's taking a toll on you. You can't go out. You can't do anything. You can't see your loved ones. And then they die. And then the government has a party. That's not good at all. And that's why, that's why we're getting massive, a massive discontent amongst everyone, amongst all voter bases. I mean, the fact is, it's not surprising, is it, really? With, with Boris Johnson, it, it's not surprising. He, he's done this before. He, he lies before. He'd, he's, he's done things that many people would, would say are completely wrong. Most people probably would say are completely wrong. And he's not particularly... A, 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 he's not a character driven by morality. He's a character driven by votes. And I, I mean, in a way, that's why this story might hit harder for him as well, because he's driven by votes, not morality. And I mean, I forgot what my second point. Was. Actually, it actually might do. Uh, Boris Johnson, for the first time, I think ever, he actually apologised in at PMQs. He, but, uh, this but, year. but but he didn't he didn't apologise for his actions. No, no, no. He he didn't apologise for that. He apologised because the video got leaked even though even though this party never happened the video the video got leaked so apparently so he wasn't apologizing for the parties no he was apologizing right. for a video of somebody laughing about a party that never happened which is a it's a bit of it's it's becoming a little bit confusing to keep up with isn't it oh i think we've, we've had our first step we've had our first apology uh, on whatever it might be so um yeah cameron I, I I would just say that look to to emphasise the point the PM's position is is looking increasingly untenable yet because he's Teflon he will um, evade all the criticism he'll uh, um, he'll evade all the scandals and he'll come through the other the other end and um, his popularity will be hit by it which is worrying for 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 me and and I'm sure for the Conservative Party going into next election whenever it is but also fundamentally because we want um, the, the party to be popular and, and to have really clear and transparent links to, to people and for people to understand that politicians are human and that, the cons and, and that conservative politicians and MPs are simply trying to do things that are in the best interest of the people. And, and having, an in, having a party um, during a lockdown implemented by the government is not in the best interest of the people, obviously. Why? Um, and certainly question whether or um, many Conservative MPs are driven by that goal. I'd hope so, but I wouldn't, wouldn't bet on it. Well, I think you'd be incredibly mistaken. That would be very naive if you believe that um, a lot of Conservative MPs aren't in, uh, simply in it to, to gain power. And, and I think that's a common misconception when it comes to all MPs. Um, you don't go into politics unless you have some desire to actually improve people's lives and or or help them or implement policies that you believe will do so otherwise um why why have you studied politics why have you um, engaged in politics in the first place because um in that case once you get to power what are you going to do um, to actually improve people's lives so um i think it's wrong to say that and, and i know that the reason i want to get into politics i'm sure the reason both of you as well is because you want to help improve people's lives and implement policies that you think will do that try and suggest ideas for how we can improve our country um, so, yeah, I, I think that um, to, to try and <laughs> criticise all Conservative MPs sim simply in that light is, is, is naive. But, but what I would say is that Conservative MPs should start showing a bit more of a backbone when it comes to uh, independent thought and independent viewpoints towards their leaders. Um, that's not to say that none are. We know that um, 
a, a lot of MPs between 50 and 100. We don't know the exact numbers, obviously. Um, I think are considering voting against the government on the regulations next week. And I feel that's um, a really important step. I feel very strongly about that. Um, not just because of the fact that uh, COVID regulations, but because of the fact that I think MPs need to um, show that they're not all just, um, you know, a monkey could do the job of, of just uh, voting with your government every time. What are you elected to deliver? You're not elected to just do what your government tells you. So for, for these MPs to show that backbone, to show the independent um, thought is really important. And I hope that they carry that forward into assessing whether Boris Johnson is still the right man to lead the party and still the right man to lead the country. You know, 55, only 55 letters need to be sent in to the 1922 committee to trigger a leadership election. That's, that, and that's not a lot, it's 15% of Conservative MPs. And I, I believe that um, if, if the numbers that are gonna vote against the regulations next week um, are to take that forward, and to realise that Boris Johnson is, is a spineless charlatan, which is what he fundamentally is, I'm afraid to say, um, then they'll be able to, to trigger that election and hopefully we'll be able to, to make a change at the top of the party that will, um, I would say, rejuvenate to some degree um, what is looking increasingly like dead wood to me, um, rotting away and, and, and really bring it back to life. Because for me, um, as a Conservative, I look at this leadership right now and I don't see any. I just see a kind of an, 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 a black hole attempting to absorb everything around it, but, but, but fundamentally failing and basically just rotting away. So we need to, we need absolutely to fix this. And uh, definitely, I mean, the scandals have got to stop. And, and I've said this now for weeks, if they don't stop and they keep on coming, they keep on coming, if they don't stop, then MPs have to make a change. And, they have to see this now. I mean, it, it's interesting you talk about the amount of scandals because the government, I mean, there's, there's obviously one or more people in the government who really want Boris Johnson gone, which, because, because how, how else would a video of Allegra Stratton laughing at, like, the, their party come out? I mean, it, it's got to come from somewhere within, within government. There are, I mean, I, I saw a tweet the other day from a former civil servant talking about how a, Dominic Raab and Boris Johnson were the two worst foreign secretaries he'd ever worked with, and, and by a country mile. He said it was the difference between him and the Usain Bolt running the 100 metres between Raab and Johnson and the other, and the other, home sec uh, the other foreign secretary, sorry. And I, 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 I mean, it, civil servants are notoriously right, centre right, and, and don't really express their opinions that often. And it just shows how far we've fallen as a country to have voted so overwhelmingly for Boris Johnson and the fact that he sold so many people a lie. I mean, maybe it's not a lie because we probably should have already known that he was a, a liar and a joker, but... I mean, the... No, actually, on, in, in 2019, we were, we were, we were promised a, a strong leader to get us through Brexit, and that, that, has, that is what happened. Uh, on if we're talking about foreign issues, Boris Johnson does have experience uh, as foreign secretary. That's why it was probably right for him to uh, att attempt to get somewhat of a, a Brexit deal through. But unfortunately, on COVID, on this public health crisis that we've had, he wasn't the man to lead us, and he shouldn't have been. Did you, yeah, you, this is a fantastic point actually, because it's Roger's right. Boris Johnson's skill set was particularly suited to the issue of resolving the deadlock in parliament and getting brexit done that's why he did it everything he did was so meticulously planned risks were taken such as the um, expelling of mps that were so well well thought through and at the end of the day brexit got done within within a month fundamentally the withdrawal pass the bill was passed um and uh, not within a month of his leadership within a month of the election but everything that led up to that election was so meticulously planned and he did that very well but at this point, that when the global pandemic comes along, this is a guy who has no idea what to do because his uh, set of skills, and he does have skills, um, were so badly suited to, to this. There's no way that you can make the most of a global pandemic in terms of inspiring hope and optimism, especially when you're introducing perpetual restrictions that we still appear to be um, suffering under. So so for the, for the PM, this is um, a bit of a disaster class. And as I say, 
it's not just that. I feel as though he is badly suited to be our prime minister just in general now. And perhaps that's the result of, of what's happened because of the pandemic, such as so many uh, breaking of lockdown rules as we've seen with the parties. But but fundamentally now you, you go through this pandemic and you see him and you think, is this really a leader? And is this guy really going to deliver on all of his promises? Because he's not really telling the truth all the time. And that's a shame because so many of the policies that were in the manifesto and so so much of the levelling up agenda, the Green Industrial Revolution, these are good one nation policies that would gain the support of most of the country fundamentally. And um, if we had the right guy to, to be the figurehead of them, to deliver them, um, we would see the impact in our community. So it's a shame to me that we don't have that guy, it seems. I, I'm interested because just before Rajan referred to leadership skills in relation to Boris Johnson, I, I don't see them. Second of all, Cameron referred to his skill set being suited to Brexit. Again, I'd love to hear, hear that. And finally, you talk about this open optimism he had during the pandemic. If I'm not wrong, a few months ago, or like when we, I think we, we, were, we were talking and, and both of you referred to this optimism and how we should be optimistic and that's not really come to fruition, has it? So um, what I'm actually saying is that Boris Johnson is a naturally hopeful and optimistic character. And, and if you look at, if you remember his uh, campaign from the 2019 general election, I remember one poster in particular um, had him looking, you know, smiling and, and with the thumbs up and um, looking almost into the future as of like, right, great, this is the guy to lead us into a future of prosperity um, how, with getting, and, and the words how, getting how get Brexit that? done. And uh, well, perhaps, yeah. Um, so, so what I'm saying is that that is a that is a very successful skill set that has served his, him well in his political career, and it served him well, very well, especially well in getting Brexit done, which he did do. But you can't do that in a global pandemic. You've got to be on detail. You know what I think, and I mean, um, it's funny we we were talking about this today, and everyone in the group was agreeing. You can cut this bit out, but in fact, please cut this out. But Ben Spencer was saying that um, that he was arguing from the start there should have been a cross-party coalition for the pandemic for the purpose of the pandemic like one of the the war coalitions uh, anyway that's besides the point cut that out um what i'm what i'm saying is that uh the um he he he, he wasn't the right man to 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 be to lead us during this period he, he's not a guy who's always on his, on the brief on the detail and and sadly um now we've seen the, the fruition of that the fact is he was doomed to be prime, like he was doomed because he is a, he, as a prime minister, he, he was completely doomed. Even if there was no pandemic, he still would have been doomed because, I mean, fundamentally, he, he hasn't promised what he, what he, what he promised, or he, has, he hasn't delivered what he promised, sorry. Um, and that, I mean, levelling up is kind of this lovely phrase that people can throw around, but until it gets delivered, I don't believe in leveling up, but I'd, like, I'd love to see it happen. Um, and and that's, that's the problem with Boris Johnson. He's a liar. He's, as you say, he's a charlatan and he's a, he's a snake oil salesperson. That's what we, we've seen. He, I mean, it, but I, 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 I go back to a, a point that was raised. So Kwasi Kwarteng was being interviewed and they brought up the Nolan principles, which are kind of the, the key things that um, it was introduced by jo John Major after this big scandal had hit him. Yeah, as to what all public servants, uh, and in, in this case, the prime minister, should subscribe to. And the, 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 the fact is, Boris Johnson doesn't meet any of them. And Kwasi Kwarteng was asked about this, once to get back to the point. Um, and he said he got Brexit done. When he was asked about the Nolan principles, he got Brexit done. There's only so long that you can rely on getting Brexit done. He got it done in a very bad way. And we... But that's beside the point. He he he, he doesn't. He, he he's not a leader. He's he's a clown, and people believed him. People people believe this clown was going to rise up and into this optimistic future, and that's never happened with Boris Johnson, and it never will happen with Boris Johnson because fundamentally he's a clown. If you're watching, uh, subscribe, like the video. Thanks.